Father, I just pray that the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit will be released this morning upon us. Help me to be clear, quick, and effective in seeing you move and do miracles in this room, which I believe you've already begun. In Jesus' name, amen. The last time we talked, I talked about the power of the promise of God. Uh, you know, how if we, the, we go through times and seasons in our lives where things collapse, sometimes we, uh, there'll be quite a few people here where you've almost come to the end of your faith. And, um, yeah, and you, you're at a stage where you can't even scrape yourself up off the floor. So when uh, we talk about faith or achieving things for God or seeing mighty things happen and there's no petrol in the engine, uh, we, we, we looked last time at where you start if there's nothing there, if there's nothing left, if things have collapsed inside of you, if disappointment's overwhelmed you, if despair's taken hold of you. Uh, we talked about what to do, and that was, I think I'd get told you a little story about finding that key of promise. That's what to do. The, the, faith is triggered by the promises of God, by the word of God spoken into your spirit. And that's why it's so important when God speaks to you, even if it's in the middle of the night, have a little notebook, or I use these days um, my phone, there's a little notebook on it, and on there I write everything down as God speaks to me, and then I read it back. And what I'm doing is I'm reading into my spirit things God has spoken, things God has promised, and uh, it's amazing that if you can locate or ask the Lord, if you in going through a very difficult time, ask the Lord, Lord, remind me what you spoke into my heart and spirit and help me to take hold of it and use it. And what you'll find that something will spring. It's like the promises of God are like little plant. It'll just spring up. And little buds will come into, into your memory. And these little buds are buds of hope. And out of those buds of hope comes a, a, the seed of faith. Amen. So we talked about the promise, locating the promise of God, hanging on to the promises of God. There's a hymn that we used to sing, Standing, 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 and standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Um, but I want to go a stage further, a bit like when you're driving a car and you go into gear one. Now, that's gear one. Well, I want to take it up a gear, and I want to speak on receiving a spirit of faith. You see... Uh, in, particularly in Britain, we know a lot and, uh, and we, you know, have access to the Bible and we're inundated with truth, but we don't see the miracles and the power of God moving to, at the level of our awareness. And it's because we've got, we can find ourselves as Christians and as churches with a whole pile of knowledge, but very little faith. And faith isn't generated by positive thinking. God wants to breathe a spirit put on us, a spirit of faith. Amen. And one of the reasons why I'm like I am is I've been around people who just didn't uh, do things that were faith-filled, but they carried a spirit of faith. And, uh, and, and what, what happens if you're around people who carry a spirit of faith? It's like they've got the measles and you catch it off them. You catch a spirit of faith. 
And I want every one of you to go out of this door today and you be infected with a spirit of faith. Hallelujah. Um, now, it might be, you see, that you're going through uh, a lot of attack at the moment. It might be, um, we, in fact, in the meeting, we've been praying for things. You know, when we look at dear, uh, the dear lady you were praying for before, it's like that's been an attack, hasn't it? And you're right to come against it. And there'll be things where you might have been hammered and you think you don't know what to do. Um, I don't know where I'm going to live. I'm in a new situation. I need God to give me a job. I need God to break open things. And uh, the enemy is out to kill and to steal and to destroy your health. You mind, you promises, you destiny. And so it's so important that you understand how to wage a warfare against him. And the way to do it is to locate the promises of God, but ask God, to, uh, we're going to ask God for a spirit of faith. Amen. And people, I mean, there are better, you know, I, I, I'm with some people and I think, God, they're fantastic speakers. And I, I've often said to people, well, I don't know why you've asked me to come and speak. And, um, but what I do know is I carry a spirit of faith. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting miracles to happen all the time. Amen. It might be that I'm just a bit deranged, but there you go. But just turn to somebody and say, the devil is not your friend. You might say, well, I'm not a Christian, so he's not going to go after me. Listen, he's not a friend of anybody. He's at, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and you might have it abundantly. And when you're under attack, say, Lord, you've promised me life, a good life, a better life. So I'm not having this. You've promised to bless your church, so I'm not having this. You know, and the reason why I want to speak on this spirit of faith is because I believe God wants to use you. You see, I, I don't believe in the ecclesiastic format that there's the ordained people. And then there's the non-ordained people. I believe everybody is ordained by the Holy Spirit. Now, your range of ministry might not be on a platform in a church, but it will be a ministry in a factory or in a shop or in an office or on a street or as a neighbor. And God wants you to carry the power of God. He wants you to see miracles happen in your street, in your job, in your work in your life, in this church. And one of the great things about this church was um, in this service I was at, people just popped up and they shared, didn't they? I thought it was quite wonderful what was shared, to be honest with you. Praise God. I was getting inspired sitting in at the back there. Amen. He wants you to use you to see the goodness of God released on people. He wants to use you and for you to know the authority that you have in Christ. You see, when you've got a spirit of faith, you know that there's an authority in you. So when things start going crazy, 
this spirit of faith will rise up and challenge things and shift things and move things and will not accept things. But it's a spirit of faith that comes from heaven. It isn't generated by a positive mindset or uh, repeating a mantra. God wants you to catch a spirit of faith. And he wants to reveal... Charles Wesley put it like this in his hymn. Spirit of, uh, Charles Wesley, by the way, a massive revival that lasted nearly 150 years. In fact, we're still living on bits of the remnant of it now. But he wrote this hymn, Spirit of Faith, come down. Spirit of Faith, come down and reveal the things of God and make us Make to us the Godhead known and the witness with his blood. And God wants to bring a spirit of faith and it will reveal the power of the promises of God, the power of the cross, the power of the blood, the power of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, at the end of this, I want to pray for people that there'll be an impartation of a spirit of faith on you, okay? Um, and what you must realize that we're talking about strongholds. Um, uh, there may be on you a spirit of negativity. And it needs to be broken. Uh, first thing you need to do while I'm talking, you must realize you need to repent of it. You need to repent of saying, oh, this is an acceptable form of uh, um, attitude and mindset. You've got to see it as, a, as, as an evil thing, okay? Now, if you're a negative person, just see that that is an aspect of your p- character that God wants to change, not what he doesn't want to adapt what he's going to breathe through you. He wants to break that, okay? And you can't break it sometimes because... You've been through all sorts of stuff. Come out. We're going to pray for that to come off you. I'm going to pray for a spirit of faith to come on you. Okay. Um, You say, well, where's this in the Bible, the spirit of faith? Well, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. And I'm just basically going to mention, speak around this verse, okay? 2 Corinthians 4, 13 Having, having the same spirit of faith, according to what was written, which I believed, and therefore speak. Uh, different versions will have it in different ways. Shall we say that together? Are we ready in, in, in the version I've got in front of me? 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Having the same spirit of faith according to what was written, which I believed, therefore I speak. Let's repeat that last line. Therefore I speak. Again, therefore I speak. That's very important. Okay, having the same spirit of faith I'm not into religion and I'm not into churchianity. I, I was attracted to God because of Jesus. And I gave my life to Jesus. I wanted to be like Jesus. I wanted to behave like Jesus. I wanted to speak like Jesus. I want to see the brokenhearted like Jesus did healed. I want to see the sick like Jesus did healed. I want to see the captives released like Jesus saw released. I want to see people born again and saved just like Jesus and the disciples did. Don't you? 
Well, you won't be able to do it unless you have the same faith as them. Amen. Lord, you want me to do this, that and the other, but I need your spirit of faith on me. I want you to come in all your fullness and all your glory and all your love that will swallow up my negativity, my um, unbelief, and fill me full of the spirit that was in you, the spirit of faith. Amen. Yes, that's what it says there, doesn't it? That we have that same spirit of faith. Amen. It isn't that you just need, when you get teachers and preachers, you don't just need instruction. You need an impartation of what they carry. Amen. That's the secret. And you hang out with, hang out with people who believe that God can do anything. Um, now, if you ever want to see the opposite of that, just watch me as a Liverpool supporter. <laughs> Tonight at 4.30, they're playing Brentford. Well, I'm the epit epitome of negativity. <laughs> right? And uh, yeah, it, my, my brothers, who were very keen footballers, used to get really annoyed with me. But you know, um, in the spirit, I believe God can do anything. I'm going to pray for, we're going to pray for Arlene and a few other people. We're going to ask for creative miracles. Amen. I don't care how bad my message is. I just want to see a few creative miracles. Okay. Um, according to what was written. Funnily enough, that quote is from Psalm 116, verse 10. So when he's talking about the same spirit of faith, he's referring to the Old Testament. In fact, whenever the, the apostles speaking of the Scriptures, what they mean is the Old Testament, because when they wrote the New Testament, the New Testament wasn't written. Amen? So let's just have a look at some of these people, the same spirit of faith in the Old Testament. I'll read this to you. It's Hebrews 11.3. It goes on to 31, but we haven't got time. I'll just perhaps pick up on maybe two, and I'll do the rest another time, okay? But let's have a look at this. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was taken away so he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. By faith, Noah, divinely warned of things not seen, moved with godly fear and built an ark. Okay, let's just have a look at this. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Let's read, let, let's just say this. The things which are seen, the things which are seen were not made of things, were not made of things which are visible. This is important. You see, God, the spirit of faith comes from the spirit of God himself. God created the world through faith and called into being things that did not exist. God wants us to carry a spirit of faith that can call into being the things that don't exist. Right now, in my own family, um, we have, um, I have a nephew called Dylan. 
Dylan when he was he's 12, year, 12 or 13 now. But when he was uh, born, he didn't... He, uh, my wife will be clearer on the details. I'm not a medical person. But basically, he had no stomach or something like that. He was born without a, a stomach. So they made one. And they put it inside him. So he was doing sports about four months ago. And basically... His stomach burst. So my, I get a phone call from my sister while I'm in Beaumaris. And, um, and uh, he said, you know, he, he could die. <coughs> so, um, so they've got him in this operation to do this operation to basically make another stomach for him. But you know what I'm praying for? <laughs> you got a spirit of faith? Oh God, call on you. Bring a stomach into being. Amen. Or change that which is made into an organic stomach. I don't know whether Dave Connolly will ever remember this, but I remember in 1996, um, he, he, um, Dave Connolly is in my generation of ministers in Liverpool. And he, well, they're in front line there. They had this thing, wherever there was a revival in the world, they'd go and visit so they could catch it and bring it back here. So he went to Argentina. And he got off the plane. <laughs> he got off the plane in the, halfway through the night, and he was shipped straight into a great big industrial um, hangar where they were having this intercession meeting of about 5,000 people or what, thousands of people. And he, I remember I was sitting next to him in a minister's meeting. He said, you'll never believe this, Dave. As we were praying, there was this guy leaning on the, on the, on the uh, wall with one leg. And as we were praying, I watched as a leg grew. Hallelujah. You may have forgotten it. Maybe he made it up. But I thought, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> But that's how God made the world. Everything we see didn't exist. It was called into being by the spirit of faith in God. Amen. Let's just have a look at, just do a couple here. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. You know, faith to give. Faith to give. You know, we were with a couple that we're working with. Um, one of the churches I'm working with came to see us on Friday. And one of their big problems was they're up to the eyes in debt. I'm talking about thousands. And while we were with them, They just happened to say, the Lord sorted it all out for us. You know, a um, friend of mine, Keith Kelly, had a lovely poem, which I always remember. There was once a man they thought was mad. The more he gave, the more he had. Have you got... It's easy to have loads of faith when you've got loads of money. But have you ever been in a situation where you, I have, where you've had no money except a couple of pennies and God says, stick it in there? It takes faith, that, doesn't it? it? took faith for that, that widow with Elijah 
who only, who only had one meal with her and her son. And they said, we're just going to eat this and then starve to death. And then I think it was Elijah or Elijah came along and uh, he said, can I have a bit of your dinner? He said, well, we've only got this and once we've at it, once we've at it, it's gone. We'll, we'll all die together. But what we've got, we'll give you. So they had a nice meal, got ready to die. And Elisha said, see that bit of oil in there? Just keep pouring it into those pans. Kept pouring, 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 pouring. Ran out of pans. Go and get the pans from the neighbors. Pour it, pour it. You know, if, if, you, if you find you're in a situation and you've got hardly any money and God asks you to give it, you're in for a miracle. Because when we won't even, I, I'd say loads on that, but by faith, I'll finish with this one, okay? I'll finish with this on this particular area. By faith, Enoch was taken away so he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. Faith to believe that when you're at the end of your life, God will be there for you and escort you to heaven. Amen. You see, I believe when, I mean, I've been told I've got loads of years left, but I could go tomorrow. But I know when I do go, God's going to be there for me and he's going to escort me to heaven. I'm going to get an escort. He might not say, he might not say I'm personally going to pick you up. I'm just going to send Gabriel or a couple of his mates <laughs> and he's got the end of his bed. Say, come on, we're going now. <laughs> I was talking to a man last yesterday yesterday he used to be the minister of this church his name was Aubrey Whittle and he when he finished his ministry here he went to um, West Kirby and uh, he overdid it and and uh, he had a stroke but he went into a coma and he actually died his son, I was with his son yesterday. And his, him and his mother prayed, oh, Lord, Lord, just spent a, all night praying for him. And uh, he came back to life again. He sa and he said he couldn't move. His body wasn't working. But he could speak and think, okay. And he said, what, you be praying for me? I've been in heaven with Jesus. I didn't want to come back. <laughs> I've been with Jesus, he said. This is a minister who was here before, just 30 odd years ago, 40 years ago. He said to his son, Steve Whittle, uh, what did you pray for? Because I was with Jesus and we were walking around. I did and he said, you've got to go back. He said, they want to go back. <laughs> he said, you're going back. So he said to Stephen and his mother, listen, if I go again, I don't want you doing any more prayer meetings for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Same spirit of faith which I believed, Paul believed, what made him find and discover this spirit of faith? Well, the reason was he was riding with his own pride and his own agenda down the road to Damascus and he was going to sort the whole world out and then Jesus appeared to him. 
This is how he received the spirit of faith. He had an encounter with Jesus. And you know, I believe whether you, if you don't know Jesus, you need to say, God, I want a face-to-face encounter with you. And you know, if you're a Christian and you've been through this, it's been like the British weather chart for you, like this. <laughs> you know, and you go to churches, we need fresh encounters of God. We want to see God again, face-to-face. And he saw Jesus. And Jesus said, what are you playing at? Oh, I want to see Jesus, don't you? This is how you receive a spirit of faith. You see Jesus again. You hear his voice speaking into your spirit again. I I, I don't care how long we've been a Christian or how long a church has been going. We regularly need fresh encounters of Jesus. Amen. And I'll finish here. Therefore, I speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost was on that song, wasn't he? I could feel when the Holy Spirit came on this meeting today and it started with that song when we sang this song, I'm going to speak the name of Jesus over my family, over my situation, over my sickness, over my job, over my fears. I'm going to speak the name of Jesus. says in Matthew, doesn't it? If you have uh, faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain. When's the last time you spoke to a mountain in your life or in your situation? I'm not really bothered about my message. I just want to see us all shift in mountains. Hallelujah. What mountains need shifting? So you know when we were speaking the name of Jesus? I've got things going on in my life, in our situation. Guess what I was doing? I was speaking the name of Jesus over it. Oh, speak the name of Jesus over it. Speak to the mountain. Doesn't say pray. Doesn't say Plead. Speak. If you've got a spirit of faith in you and, and, and you speak to a mountain, that mountain is going to move. I'm just going to flick as fast as I can here. I just wanted to speak, perhaps just share with you what I do. Uh, Just let me let you know something. I'm still learning, okay? I'm still learning, but it might be helpful to you to know what I do, how I approach things. Well, I try to live in a continual state of communion with God. So I'm praying all the time. I also believe in prayer meetings. It's biblical, it's right, we're instructed to do it. But God wants to put you in you a continual, a, 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 commun, a communion with God where you commune all the time. Uh, the, one of the greatest healers in this country was Smith Wigglesworth. And he said, I never pray for more than half an hour. And, and it's Victorian England where they're praying like a month and nearly dying of starvation, you know, fasting and praying. He said, oh, I never pray for more than half an hour. And they thought, how, how, how is he doing all this? He only prays for half an hour. He said, but by the way, I'd never go for more than half an hour without praying. 
Now, I, I believe you should pray for more than half an hour, but the perp- living in a state where you're just constantly talking to Jesus, say, Jesus, what can we do about this? What are you saying about this? Will you speak to me about that? Will you forgive me for this? Will you help me with that? So I like to to do that. I try to be sensitive to the impressions and inward convictions of the Holy Spirit. So I'm I'm moved by instinct. So I hear the voice of God very often through instinct. This is what the West don't understand, that we're so up here, rationally orientated with reason and all that, which has got a good side, that we forget that God speaks through instinct, through conscience, through conviction. And you, you, you've got to learn to pick, ask God to help you to pick up the signals of how the Holy Spirit speaks through your instincts. Amen. Ask him for words of knowledge. Ask him for the gift of discernment of spirits. And you'll start to find that as you're doing stuff, you get, you get instincts. And, and so that's what I do. I also I try to live a life that's abandoned to God. No use expecting miracles if you live in a double life. So you be abandoned to God. Um, Locate the key of promise in your heart. What is it you've embedded in my heart? And then I pull it out and I start speaking it. And I don't, I'm not speaking to God. I'm speaking to principalities and powers. I'm speaking to the enemy. I'm speaking to the devil. So that's why I'm, I might sound a bit aggressive when I'm praying. I'm not saying nice prayers to God or even the person. I'm speaking to the things that are destroying people's lives. You know, if someone came in here and grabbed you by the throat and smacked you in the face, <laughs> and I was like I used to be, I'd have grabbed hold of him and punched him right through that window. <laughs> now, I don't do that anymore. All right, Lord took that right out of me. But spiritually, that's what I do with devils. Grab hold of them by the throat and say, you're going out that window. Okay, with that in mind, these are the things I do. Oh, by the way, I constantly ask the Lord to forgive me and to forgive others. Guard your heart. You don't get bitter or cynical or critical. And if you do, say, God, I'm sorry I got like that. Will you wash it away? And I'll forgive everybody else that's been a pain in my neck too. (laughs) Amen. So that's what I do. And then I have six words. This is what I do all the time. Inquire, call, Command, declare, confess. I could, I'll develop these in another time. I inquire of the Lord, call on his name. I confront the cause, confront the issue, the root cause, confront it in prayer. And then I command things to happen. Then I declare the promises and favor of God over things. And then I confess things as though they were. Amen. Back to Hebrews 1 verse 1. Spoke into being things that are yet to exist. Hallelujah. That's what I do. Maybe I'm up the wall. 
and maybe the Lord will show me a bit more and all that. Father, we just come to you. I just want you to put out your hand to the Lord um, because I'm going to ask the Lord to deposit things in you. But if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, he died on the cross for you and he loves you. And you might need, like Paul, to have an encounter with him. So before I pray this prayer with everybody else, I just want you to say, God, come to me and reveal yourself to me and put your life in me. Okay, let's pray this prayer together. Dear God, I receive from you a spirit of faith that will move mountains, that will reveal the authority that I have in you. I command in the name of Jesus the mountains to shift, for things to be changed and be conformed to what you have planned and you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen.